Hello, my name is Jacob Whitley. I'm a Toronto-based artist. Uh, I am represented by Julian Zabuki at Zabuki Contemporary. Uh, and this is my studio, so thanks for coming in. Um, I've been working on a show over the last six months, uh, primarily collage-based with some sculpture. Uh, and a lot of that work has been inspired by Karen Barad's writings. Uh, her book, um, Meeting the Universe Halfway, has really uh, sort of touched on what I have been doing since the early 2000s, where uh, I was looking at collage, my collage practice as a way to express a sense of atemporality, uh, a sense of nonlinear time. And specifically in her book, she references quantum theory uh, and the idea, idea of superposition where particles can exist both in space and time uh, at multiple points. Uh, so the, the paper in my archive uh, spans over 100 years. I've been collecting it since the early 2000s, and uh, most of the paper exists from around 1870 up until the 1970s. Um, a lot of my early sort of collages that I've made sort of existed within the realm of reconfiguring modernist ideals. So this, the time span of around 1870 to 1970 sort of encapsulates that before the um, sort of postmodern era took effect within sort of popular culture. Uh, and so with my sort of reconfiguring of histories and time, taking material specifically from that era and sort of rebuilding these worlds or these sort of compositions uh, was a way for me to envision uh, futures that uh, were proposed but never became real. But the reason why I was drawn to that paper, well, specifically, I guess, I, I studied graphic design when I went to OCAD. And over that sort of my exposure through uh, design history, I discovered Kurt Schwitters, mm -hmm. who was both a designer and an artist. Mm -hmm. And his, his collage work and his assemblage work sort of just resonated for me. It made sense. And I uh, started collecting the paper before I even knew what I was going to do with it, um, with, with a way of sort of trying to connect to his practice. Uh, so the works that uh, I have in front of me right now um, are recent collages that I have made. Uh, part of my process when I am creating uh, new works is that uh, I work in series and I like to make more panels than will actually be in the series itself. So these three works uh, were sort of part of that process and they won't be in my show uh, this November. Um, these two specifically, I wanted to create a series of sort of diagrammatic collage works that alluded to the process of sort of becoming and dismantling um, and when I initially put down the ground, which is these, you know, three pieces of paper that had these images printed on them, uh, I was looking forward to sort of doing something a little bit more intricate like this. Uh, but uh, over time and sort of working on some of the other ones, I realized that they were, they were completed themselves. So this, works, this work is a, an outlier in the series that I've been working on. Um, I had been reading a lot about Francis Picabia and have been always engaged with his sort of diagrammatic drawings, those sort of ridiculous, whimsical uh, sort of pen and ink drawings with little texts and things like that. Uh, and I wanted to sort of emulate that idea. But as I sort of worked on this and uh, felt like I overworked it, it sort of went more into the realm of his painting, uh, The Cacodelic Eye, where you have you know that little eye portrait but then because he was sick getting uh, treatment for an infected eye uh, a lot of his um, peers came by and signed this sort of painting that had been sort of set up next to him uh, and then sort of I, I worked with that idea because I'd sort of obviously created these very obvious uh, sort of eye elements um, yeah So uh, the name of my show for Zubuki is Beige Mint, which is a anagram for time being. I like to use anagrams as a way of disrupt disrupting the linear nature of information and time. Um, a lot of the inspiration for that show came from these found wires. So as I bike across the city, I live in the West End and I work in the East End. And over the course of those travels, I pass a lot of the sort of new developments in the city. And a lot of those developments obviously are caged off with larger fences. And some of those fences are tied or fastened together with these wires. So these wires for me represent that sort of interplay of 
dismantling and becoming the, not only do they hold these gates together, which are these temporary structures, they, you know, sort of keep us out of uh, the space that is becoming within the space that is. Uh, and then they themselves are formed by the sort of collaboration between sort of the humans that have tied them, but then once they're discarded, there's a lot of environmental sort of uh, interactions that happen with them and they, you get these really interesting sort of gestures. And it's within these gestures that I've sort of seen a dance, a sort of, sort of performative aspect that happens. Uh, and that dance is subject to time and it's movement through time. And I've wanted to express that not specifically with the materials themselves, but using the paper that I have in my archive that uh, shares a very similar sort of lived experience as the wires. So in, in my show, there are three series of collages. This series specifically grounds itself uh, on using sort of archival paper uh, specifically seven inch record sleeves as the surface that uh, I build the collage off of. Um, you know, the record sleeve itself is a sort of enclosure. Uh, it is a record keeper. Um, the, the grounding material for this collage is uh, an old seven inch record sleeve. I had a whole series of them. And um, what I liked about that was that they were a structure for storing information. The record itself is a, um, a recording and then these were the home in which the uh, recording lived in. So there's a lot of like human traces and a lot of environmental interactions that sort of happens with, you know, the taking out of the record and putting it back in the record shelf. So I felt that the sort of the, the aura of this paper uh, had a very sort of like interesting domestic lived experience to it. I think the, the collages in this series that have a lot of sort of structural elements that sort of protrude and then have these holes in them, I wanted to create a sort of sense of structural space that allowed these papers or this sort of decentralized network of uh, temporality to sort of move around the, the frame of reference um, and giving these flaps sort of multiple holes to move through. There's a, a sense of agency that the paper has sort of exerted upon the composition itself and woven its way through uh, the surface. This collage is the first in this kind of its series where this is an old photo album uh, that I deconstructed. So you're getting a lot of the traces of what used to sort of be glued in there, be it photography or old pamphlets and things like that. Uh, and then each of these tabs, these holes, uh, which fit within a ringed binder. And I sort of, I found these little gateways, these holes, uh, an amazing way to sort of illustrate that sense of agency as sort of the, the paper and these, these thin little paper ribbons uh, moved across the frame of reference. So I echoed that through all of the other works within this series. Um, so this series of collages uh, is a new sort of uh, avenue of exploration for me. I've been really wanting to make uh, sort of sculptural works that uh, utilize the paper the, and sort of showcase the embedded history um, within the paper itself, but sort of really have it sort of rolling across the support and really having it sort of emerging from the sort of different temporalities that each of these papers offer. Um, and the, these are sort of also a product of 16 years of working in collage. So every time I sort of cut a piece of paper uh, or make a new collage, I save all of the offcuts and I put it into a tub over here or sort of over here. And I'm able to reference those elements sort of continuously throughout uh, my making process. So all of the collages that I've made since 2004 have some kind of element uh, that has been carried through all of the works. So there's a, there's a continuity, there's like a timeline through all of them. With these, with this series, um, the initial placement on all of them was once again, some old seven inch record, um, you know, record covers. So the, the initial composition and the initial challenge that I created 
with putting these down and creating the imbalance uh, was with these, these record covers. And then that provided sort of the initial sculptural relief. So the initial movement on all of the uh, panels on this series was a seven inch record sleeve. Um, that was the first move. So to sort of create that sort of compositional imbalance, I would put that down, um, sort of using the pre-existing sort of tears and folds uh, and accentuating that by gluing it a little awkwardly. So it, it puffed out off the uh, panel itself. And that uh, was the start for all of these. And then I worked sort of building sculpturally and creating these sort of layers and folds and weaving the work in between uh, each other. Uh, in my process of making sort of collage works, um, this is my tub of offcuts. This is 16 years worth of cutting paper uh, and collage materials. Um, every time I finish making a collage or a series of collages, I sort of clear the board by dumping it back into this bin. And then subsequently, I'm able to pull these materials through any sort of future panels that I've made. Within the three series of works that I've been working on, uh, one that sort of exemplify sort of the nonlinear movement through time, sort of that atemporal um, weaving between past, present, and future, and I guess these works that are more structural, that sort of sense that as we move through line, not so much that we leave behind a path, but we carve our way through the past, present, and future and temporality. Um, these works are sort of a representation of those landscapes that we sort of leave behind or that we have yet to encounter or that sort of will never become because of the choices that we have made uh, moving through um, time itself. So the one of the important things for me when I'm making a new piece is the ground or the initial surface that I start working with. So most of the works that I have made to date uh, exist on old maps. Um, because I needed something that had a blank surface that uh, had a sense of history and had all these amazing little nuances, it, nuances on it, but also was able to fit onto a larger panel. So this work and a lot of the work in the show is made off of uh, old maps or um, old architectural drawing backdrops uh, or I guess photo albums and things. But specifically with this piece, this was an old map and what drew me to it were these old tape marks. Uh, because someone had obviously lovingly used this map and had, you know, used it time and time again and needed to repair it because of its overusage. So this presented the initial composition where it was just these sort of taped elements and then I sort of worked the rest of it um, in relationship to uh, the placement of those tape marks. So the elements on this collage come from about probably 10 years worth of work. So this was on a panel that I had started maybe five years ago, uh, but didn't like how it was developing. So I sort of harvested the pieces back off of it. Um, this weird little turkey wing piece of paper, uh, I've had this sitting around since 2003, and I finally found some usage for it. And then a lot of the elements on the panel itself are just the accumulation of offcuts, you know, positives and negatives uh, while I've been making collage for the last 16, 17 years. There's like old ledgers, there's an old copper plate writing. This is probably something from around 1910. Um, I can tell you that this is definitely a sort of turquoise bit is from an offcut from the record cover collage that I just sort of talked about. Um, and then subsequently, uh, a lot of these sort of linear elements were when I was say trimming an older piece of work uh, to fit onto a panel. This element right here, this little red element comes from an old drawing that I found on the ground uh, maybe five or six years ago. Uh, maybe it had fallen out of some student's um, notebook or something like that, but it was a, a really interesting drawing of a dinosaur. Um, but 
you know, because of the environmental effects it had been rained on and stepped on and driven over a bunch of different times. The paper was very sort of brittle. Uh, and as I was sort of putting it into my archive, it sort of fell apart on me. So my process usually begins with sort of, like I said, a, a blank panel that is, the ground is derived from sort of an old map. Uh, and then I sort of started digging through my archives. Earlier on in my process, I would uh, laboriously cut out things, but now that I'm about 16 years into creating work, uh, I have a lot of amazing, interesting sort of off cuts. So um, I start by finding something that's uh, pre-existing and working from there and then sort of uh, build towards uh, completion as I sort of see how everything's sort of working out. 